oh, hey, didn't see you there. I was enjoying this feeling of having an SR-71 behind me. <laughs> this Blackbird just makes me feel all good inside. Let's take a walk around it, and I'm gonna give you the history and some detailed facts that you probably don't know about the SR-71. So the SR-71 was built by the United States in response to advanced missiles that were created by the Soviet Union that could actually shoot down the U-2. So President Johnson said, hey, let's build a fighter that can go above Mach 3, maybe even faster, so that it can outrun missiles. And this is the creation. This is the response to that. This thing can basically turn and outrun missiles. So it's the ultimate middle finger to any missiles that are shot at it. It can turn, the missiles will burn out, and this thing just keeps going on, along with its mission. Mach 3.3, so you're looking at around 2,163 miles per hour. Hey guys, quick break from the video. Have you heard of the Apple Vision Pro? Of course you have because you're alive and it's 2024. Well, you can win this Apple Vision Pro. All you gotta do is click the link in the description, buy a limited edition collectible, and you'll be automatically entered to win this Apple Vision Pro. But it's a limited time offer, so you gotta get in before the date that's listed in the description. So click that right now so you can get set up to have this bad boy at your house, flying sims with it, whatever you wanna do. Highly recommend the Apple Vision Pro. I'm gonna be making content with it as well. So check out that link in the description. Ah, this thing's just sweet. All right, back to the video. No big deal. Coast to coast, United States, just over an hour. So could you imagine, you're like, hey, I'll see you in an hour. And then you just uh, pop in one of these things. It's a two-seater, so you got room for yourself and a friend. But the person that sat in the back there was a weapon systems operator. So you could have strategic reconnaissance being done by the Wizzo in the back seat while the pilot was focused on flying Mach 3.3. Not a bad setup, not a bad deal. And then when you look at the structure of the aircraft, it's basically two afterburning, continuous afterburning engines attached to a fuselage. So when you look at the thinness of the way that the fuselage is connected to the engines, the reason why is because up at altitude, the air is super thin. So this whole thing has to basically be a wing. And continuously afterburning allows it to get up to Mach 3.3 and stay there but that doesn't come without risks because when you go that fast, you've now got a thousand degree Fahrenheit potential for that much heat to be on the skin of this aircraft and on the windscreens that I told you about earlier. So taking a look at those windscreens, they had to be made of quartz and gold and probably some other material that we don't even know about in order to maintain integrity during that much heat and the color black absorbs and dissipates heat. So you kind of get the best of all worlds and that's why this thing is black and that's why it's dubbed the Blackbird. So looking down the structure of this, you can just see the real clean lines and the fact that it looks like a transformer. I mean, this thing is way ahead of its time. And the way that it kind of ripples and flexes, every one of those ripples and flexes has a purpose. So the designers created this to operate at those intense high speeds hypersonic, approaching hypersonic speeds to where the airflow is doing things that it won't do to normal aircraft. And that leads me to the throttle control unit. That's what's on front of these engines is this big cone, which basically maneuvers the air and allows the air to flow in to that engine at a rate that is not supersonic. Because if the air flows in supersonic, even though this thing's going supersonic and past supersonic, and even the turbines inside it are spinning supersonic, if the air goes in supersonic, it's gonna cause a supersonic compressor stall. Not gonna be a good day when you're at 85,000 feet and Mach 3.3. That's gonna end your party really soon. So this directs the air into that engine in a fashion where it's not supersonic, and then the gears turn supersonic inside of it, the fans, the turbo fans inside of it turn supersonic, and it's basically a normal jet engine combined with a ramjet engine and it creates a continuously afterburning engine, which is why you get the diamond pattern in the afterburner of the SR-71. And flying this thing, it's pretty much an afterburner the entire time, unless you're aerial refueling. That's just awesome. I mean, that just makes me, if, if ever this thing is brought back, I'd, I'll be the first to jump back in it as long as, as long as the ejection seat's working. So flowing down, you can see the shape, how the wings just kind of expand out and they have that flex to them. Again, giving it the ability to operate with very low amounts of air because the higher you get up in the atmosphere, the less air that you're gonna have. As we scan to the back of this thing, you can see how big the engines are. I mean, look at those nozzles. These things are just beasts. This thing should be called the beast, not the Blackbird. 
looking at the size of those, afterburners dumping out of the back of those. I mean, if that doesn't get you excited, I, guys, I don't know, I, I can't help <laughs> at this point. <laughs> so looking down the back, you can see the fuselage, how thin it actually is. I mean, just the strength of the skin of this thing is incredible. And that brings me to my next point. It's actually got titanium infused into the skin of the aircraft. So titanium was an issue back in the day because the US didn't have a lot of titanium grade alloy to create this structure and to create the fleet of SR-71s. So what did they end up doing? Well, they actually ended up getting the titanium from the Soviet Union. So kind of ironic, right? They got it from the Soviet Union and then they used it to build this aircraft. Definitely interesting, a little bit ironic, uh, having this thing fly over and take pictures of the Soviet Union using material from the Soviet Union. But at the end of the day, this black skin right here was super strong. The alloy and the composite that had titanium infused into it protected the internal structure of the jet. So literally it wouldn't melt when you had anywhere from 600 to 1000 degree Fahrenheit on the skin of the aircraft due to the friction, just the friction of the air moving over top of it. And so if you've seen like a re-entry vehicle coming from space, re-entering the Earth's atmosphere and how that lights up like a shooting star because of all that heat, you're getting similar to that type of heat on this. I mean, this isn't gonna be quite as much as that, but it's kind of the same concept that's gonna make this thing essentially like a shooting star when it comes to the amount of heat that's being put on top of this aircraft. So definitely interesting. And then just the size of these engines you can see how big that is. I mean, this is just a massive engine structure. Now looking down underneath, you can see the horizontal stab again here in the back. And then I'll take you guys underneath and we'll look at this ventral fin. So you've got a ventral fin here on the side. Let's see if I can get underneath this bad boy. Yeah, so you've got a ventral fin here on the side. So even up at high altitudes, you wanted to be able to have stability and even like during low altitude takeoffs and things like that, you have to have aerial stability. So the jet's not hunting and seeking to try to find its true north, to try to find its true direction. So this right here is kind of what you'd have on like a paddleboard or a surfboard that keeps you flowing straight in the water. It's going to be the same type of concept with air. Most likely you're going to want these more at a lower altitude with denser air but still they're gonna give you stability at any altitude just based on the fact that they're gonna keep that nose from hunting and trying to find a true direction. Wow, this thing is just massive. And then looking underneath, we're here underneath with the landing gear. The landing gear were actually infused with aluminum because if you just had rubber, it would melt once it was put up into the aircraft and that thousand degree temperature hit them. So you're looking at uh, just some advances in all kinds of engineering and every little detail had to be specifically thought about. All right, popping out from underneath, I'll give you guys a frontal view of the landing gear section, those landing gear trucks down there. Then you've got the right engine. Just awesome looking down that engine and, and just knowing that those turbines in there were turning supersonic. Pretty epic. SR-71, the SR-72, just some of the coolest aircraft you'll ever find. All right, I'm gonna pop you guys up now so you can take a peek at the front of the aircraft, the cockpit from above, and we'll talk about the fuselage. All right, so there's a look down the fuselage. You can just see how wide this thing is and that peek into the cockpit. You had the pilot in the front, the weapon systems operator in the back running all the cameras. And it's been said that this thing could take pictures of entire swaths of a country, like massive, massive chunks of land in seven minutes and potentially getting an entire country photographed in less than half an hour, maybe even faster than that. Just incredible to be able to do that up at altitude. Now here's a look down the very front of the aircraft. Just a real sharp looking jet. As you can see, comment below if you would fly the SR-71. I think my choice would be SR-72 and then SR-71, just because I want that modern technology. I kind of like the idea of flying a MacBook or a laptop, but also having it go Mach 3 plus. <laughs> So modern technology infused into this kind of speed and even more speed is what you're gonna get in the SR-72. Uh, maybe I'll do a video on that next. 
just seeing the engines, how much of space they take up and kind of like, again, how the jet was built around those massive engines. That's pretty normal when you think of a fighter jet as well. Uh, a lot of the fighter jets today are built around the engine and the radar. So they just take the radar, they take the engine, and they build a shape around that that'll actually make it work. Hey guys, quick reminder about the Apple Vision Pro. Just click the link in the description and you'll be taken to a site to buy a limited edition collectible. When you buy that, that'll automatically enter you to win this Apple Vision Pro right here. Do it by the date that's listed in the description though because it's a limited edition deal. By the way, I partnered with a veteran owned company to bring this to you. So by going to that link, buying that collectible, you'll be supporting me, supporting this channel, and you'll be supporting a veteran owned company, and you'll be entering yourself to win this Apple Vision Pro. Do so by the date listed in the description. Thanks guys, thanks for checking out the Apple Vision Pro giveaway. Now back to the video. All right, one last glance at the cockpits. Not too bad, pretty spacious, more spacious than the F-16. <laughs> so there you go guys, hope you enjoyed that breakdown of the SR-71. If you enjoyed this video, check out another video that'll pop up over here. You can pop over to Patreon as well. And if you wanna see this thing in real time, close up, come to the Hill Aerospace Museum, check it out. You can walk up to it, look at it, and you can really get a feel for some of the things we talked about in person. Highly recommend that. Thanks for watching guys, have a great day. We'll see you in the next video.